I think the most exciting AMD processor just dropped this week, and while it might be a naming nightmare, like the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, for example, I don't understand why AMD is just going this route. It doesn't make any sense, but look, it's something special. It has a huge 16 thread, 32 core processor paired with a massive GPU core all in one package. And it's being crammed into ultra small, but absolutely incredible things like this ROG Flow Z13 tablet. Basically the intent here is to offer what almost seemed impossible for Windows devices. And that's to beat Apple's M4 series chips in most workloads, while also giving gamers something cool to play around with. And according to AMD's own numbers, that's exactly what the AI Max Plus 395 at least can do in heavy multi-threaded workloads. Of course, take these with a grain of salt, but as we all know by now, in laptops, power consumption means everything. And these numbers wouldn't be worth anything if the devices were running at completely different power levels. So we straight up asked AMD to provide us with their testing conditions. And they did. In their testing, the MacBook Pro with the M4 14-core chip was configured to run between 48 and 50 watts, while the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 CPU TDP was 55 watts. And that means AMD has taken some huge steps for performance per watt, and devices like the Flow Z13 capitalize on that through its power modes. Basically, it can run the processor core from about 30 watts to over 42 watts, while still reserving a significant power budget for graphics if it's needed. Of course, there's gonna be other laptops that offer different balances between the two. When you dive a bit further into things, what the ROG team has done here is pretty impressive from a cooling perspective. When combined, the CPU and the GPU can chug back up to 120 watts together. And that means there's huge amounts of thermal capacity crammed into a device that's thinner than most laptops that I've seen. To achieve this, they're using their second generation Arc Flow fans, which is a full size vapor chamber system and liquid metal on the APU. I've been using this thing for more than a week. And even though this is a pre-production device, it stayed cool to the touch. And it's also pretty quiet. I've also thrown a crazy amount of workload at it as well during that time, including uh, DaVinci Resolve projects to a bunch of gaming. And honestly, I can't wait to tell you all about it in the full review, so stay tuned for that. We also had to do some sanity checks on our end as well, basically taking our own numbers and uh, comparing it to the benchmarks that ASUS posted themselves on their early pre-production set 13s because they're showing us how it scales in relation to power. So let's do a bit of comparisons on the CPU performance side against systems we've had here. And right away, you can see a trend developing. Basically, because it has more processing threads, it can run circles around the HX370 while also hanging pretty tight with the M4 Pro 14 core. In order to actually beat it, well, you'll need to look towards the gaming laptop side with the Legion 7i running its 4900HX at a crazy 100 watts in extreme mode. And remember, the flow numbers are based on ASUS's own testing with very early firmware. GPU performance is a bit harder to nail down since drivers play such a heavy role, but based on what ASUS is showing at 40 watts and 70 watts, the numbers sit somewhere between an RTX 4060 and RTX 4070. It's also way, way above any integrated graphics we've ever tested. And I know this might look like we're hyping this thing up, but it's just impossible not to get at least a bit excited about M4 competing CPU performance with RTX 4060 gaming horsepower in a single chip that can fit into something like the Z13. I mean, imagine how this thing could scale into a mini gaming PC that can compete against something like the Mac Mini in both creative and gaming workloads. It's just hard not to get excited about this, guys. Now, the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 is just the tip of the iceberg since there's a whole supporting lineup behind it that'll be offered at lower price points. And the moment you move out of the Max Plus 395, there's gonna be substantial cuts in GPU and CPU capabilities, even though clock speeds remain relatively the same. But one thing that will be the same is that every single one of these AI Max chips will have access to a massive 256-bit wide unified memory interface, allowing the CPU and iGPU to share a single pool of memory. And that will maximize performance by cutting down on the latency normally associated with uh, using a dual memory pool approach of 
other APUs. Also, even though a lot of devices will come with 32 gigabytes and 64 gigabytes of LPDDR5X, the Strix Halo architecture supports up to 128 gigabytes. And that memory footprint, along with the massive GPU payload AMD's offering here, points towards the AI Max being targeted to exactly what its name implies. Yeah, high level local AI workloads. And actually, most systems that are coming out will target that market. They even claim that it beats the desktop RTX 4090 in AI workloads, but we've got some things to say about that. Basically, this is a locally run 70B LLM, which is severely memory limited. It technically doesn't even fit on the RTX 4090's 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And that means the AI Max with its comparatively massive unified memory pool of 32 to 120 gigabytes will have a massive edge here. So it's impressive, but not as much as AMD wants you to believe. But you know what's amazing is that all of that horsepower can fit into something as small as the Flows at 13. According to ASUS, this is all about gaming and creativity on the go. And I could totally see that. For example, if you look at the size, it's super lightweight. It only weighs around 2.64 pounds and it's only 0.51 inches thin or 13 millimeters, which makes it even thinner than some of the gaming laptops with discrete graphics that I've come across in the past. The entire chassis is made out of CNC milled aluminum and it feels amazing in the hand, though I will say that the sharp edges can get discomforting over long-term use. I do feel like the Surface Pro is way better to handle. It's also topped off with a 13.4 inch, 1600p, 180 hertz IPS display that can hit 500 nits of peak brightness output. It has 100% P3 coverage and it's Pantone validated, which is a cool incentive for creators. And surprisingly, this thing actually has more ports than a lot of the thin and light laptops that I've seen in the past as well. You get two USB 4 ports, a full-size HDMI 2.1 port. Uh, you also get the slim power DC jack, which is common among their gaming lineup as well. Uh, a UHS 2 micro SD card reader, which I'm not sure is something that's beneficial to creators, but at least I appreciate the fact that it's there. And if you switch over to the other side, there's a full-size USB Type-A Gen 2 port and an audio jack. I mean, that's just incredible. You also get a dedicated power button, volume rockers, and they've also included a dedicated command central key, which essentially opens up an overlay just like that, which allows you to access Armory Crate, uh, switch between different performance modes. You can uh, disable or enable rotation locks and also change or even start recording the screen just by tapping a few buttons. So. Super cool and very convenient. This thing also comes with a detachable keyboard and it is included. It's not like you have to go buy another accessory, which is a really nice thing. And they've also taken a lot of the premium elements from some of the thin and light laptops and integrated into this form factor because it essentially allows you to take this tablet form factor and transform it into something that's versatile. For example, the keyboard, it has a good amount of travel distance. It has RGB lighting, but it's not bright enough. And this trackpad features glass, so it is super smooth. And again, it brings a lot of that premium suite of features from the thin and light laptops, which is really nice to see. And also, again, it doesn't really add too much to the weight of the Flow Z13, which is very impressive. Now, while the Strix Halo chip in this thing provides plenty of graphics horsepower, if you need more, you can use one of the USB 4 connectors, and that can be hooked up to the new RG external docks that uses a laptop RTX 5000 series GPU. I mean, this kind of connection is more likely going to be used with less powerful Intel based Flow Z13 devices with Arrow Lake processors, but I think the AI Max series plus an external dock would just be a killer little desktop replacement. The bigger question for a lot of people will, of course, be battery life because no matter which way you look at it, the Flow Z13 will likely be away from a charger for a lot of its time. And when you compare this to the previous generation, the Z13 gets a larger capacity battery going from 54 watt hours to 70 watt hours. That's good news, but there is one big unknown, and that's the overall efficiency of the Ryzen AI Max chips when they're running on battery power. It's also one of Apple's M4 strengths. It can offer incredible battery life while also retaining a huge amount of its maximum performance. Another thing that we have to take into account is, of course, pricing. And right now, for at least, the Flow will be available in two models, both with 32 gigabytes of memory and equipped with either a Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 or AI Max 390. 
Supposedly, there will be 64 gigabytes and even a 120 gigabyte version coming later. But for the time being, we're going to be seeing this thing run between $2,000 to $2,200 US. And that lines up right up against the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the 12 and 14 core M4 Pro chips. At least for creators, that would be the most natural competition. But of course, with something like the flows at 13, you do get the added bonus of the flexibility, the versatility and the gaming aspect as well. So it's a very different device. So I guess that pretty much sums things up for this quick tour of the Ryzen AI Max series and how it's being implemented into at least one device. But this is actually just the tip of the iceberg. While the Flow Z13 is really cool and overall unique device, I might even be more excited to see these new chips roll out into ultra compact desktops that could go toe to toe against, like I mentioned earlier, Apple's Mac Mini series. I mean, the possibilities of its application are endless. I just hope that there are enough chips to support that. You know, to us at least, this is one of AMD's most compelling processors ever. And I really can't wait to see what they do with future generations because in a lot of ways, the successors to Strix Halo could eventually be used in gaming laptops and bring back all AMD systems, hopefully breaking Nvidia's stranglehold in the market. Past that, the possibilities are endless. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.